Okay, uh, we're going to call this meeting to order at 107. Proceedings of this meeting will be recorded and made available on the internet. Could we have the roll call again, please? Mayor Clarkson, are you present? I am. Deputy Mayor Windover? Present. Councillor Armstrong? Present. Councillor Franzen? Present. Councillor Lamsted? Present. First staff, Donna Taggart, CAO Treasurer? Present. Dylan Kosh, Director of Recreation and Facilities? Present. Adele Arbor, Temporary Manager of Building and Planning? Present. Ann Ruth, Deputy Clerk? Present. Allison Martin, Planning Administrator? Present. Lynn Holtz, Economic Development Officer? Present. And Chelsea Carpenter, Waste Public Works Coordinator? Present. And Jesse Clark, Director of Corporate Services, Clerk is present. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> now, during our moment of reflection, during this moment of reflection, we would like to honor the lives of the 215 children recently found in a mass grave at a former residential school in Kamloops, BC. Dread Lakes Council and staff offer our sincere condolences and the flag of the municipal office will be flown at half mast. I think what this serves to do is to remind us all that this is not a part of ancient history. This is a part of history that, con that continued up until the 80s and some instances into the 90s. So this problem has, uh, <clears throat> has been a problem for many, many years. And I think each one of us have family members that if you just think for a minute, what would happen if that family member disappeared tomorrow and I never heard about them again? So I think we need to keep this in our minds and I think we need to continue to um, <clears throat> work with the government to find out ways to uh, make sure that the families are given every uh, ounce of closure that they can possibly get. Uh, it's when our, it, within our means to do it. And I think the discussions that we're having today uh, with Orc Orchard are not the same, but they are similar to this. A life lost is a life lost. It doesn't matter who the life is or anybody or anything else. It's one is as valuable as the other, but for having people to disappear with no trace, it's just unfathomable. So if we can just take a motion, a moment and, uh, and, and contemplate this, I think we should do so. Thank you. <clears throat> now we're going to do disclosure of uh, pecuniary interest again. Anybody can declare now or at any time in the future. And seeing none, <clears throat> could we have the approval of this agenda? And Jesse, you're going to uh, include the additions of um, <clears throat> uh, an additional bylaw. Here so you. if we go Thank ahead. you, Mayor Clarkson. Yes, the, the publishing of the agenda, I missed the... Um, Bylaw B 2021-73, which is a service agreement um, for the Buckhorn Feasibility Study uh, contractor. So that will be added as item 13.7. Okay. Motion to approve this agenda. Deputy Mayor Windover, Councilor Franzen, all in favor. Thank you. Now we need a couple of motions to adopt minutes of the regular the regular council meeting of May the 18th and the statutory public meeting also of May the 18th. Councillor <laughs> Lambshead, Councillor Councillor Armstrong, all in favor. Thank you. Minutes and reports from committees and boards. Economic Development Advisory Committee, May the 10th. Anybody want to speak to any of these? Special Economic Development Advisory Committee for May the 21st. Parks, Recreation, and Culture Advisory Committee of May the 13th. If we could have a motion to receive these minutes, uh, Deputy Mayor Windover, and at the same time, if, if there is anybody who wants to comment on any of these, this is a good time to do so. And the seconder would be Councillor Lambshead. All in favor? That motion is carried. Lynn Holtz, Economic Development Officer on behalf of the Economic Development Advisory Committee, Playground at Odenadang Park. Lynn, do you want to speak to this? Yes, thank you. 
Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and members of council. Speaking through you, Madam Mayor, you have before you the report of the Economic Development Officer on behalf of the Economic Development Advisory Committee regarding a public playground at Odenang Park in the hamlet of Buckhorn. At the May 10th, 2021 Economic Development Advisory Committee meeting, the committee reviewed the playground models as per Council Resolution R-2021-340 and have provided the following recommendation, that Council receives the report from the Economic Development Officer on behalf of the Economic Development Advisory Committee regarding a playground at Odenang Park in Buckhorn, and further, that Council supports the Economic Development Advisory Committee recommendation and support in principle of a playground structure at Odenang Park with a cost of approximately $50,000, a footprint of approximately 40 feet by 40 feet, subject to space limitations, a primary structure with limited outlying structures such as swings and no netting features, natural environmental colors and themes and activities for children of various ages. If you have any questions, I would be happy to try to answer those. I think one, Landis, I think this is um, uh, this is in time to apply for the grant, is it not, Donna? So through you, actually, Lynn has um, prepared the grant application. It's ready to go. Okay. Lynn, uh, Dylan is just doing his final look at it. So we are prepared. Yeah. So do we need a motion for that grant to go forward today? So through, through you, no, this is the recommendation um, from the EDAC group. Okay. So there's no no motion, it will just proceed. That's correct. Okay. Because the EDAC can't apply for the for the uh, grant, can it? The grant is applied through from the township, is it not? Right. So through you, yes, it is applied for by the township, but council wanted some input from the yeah. EDAC group, and that's what this is. Okay. All right. Um, so a motion to accept this report. Deputy Mayor Wendover, Councillor Armstrong, maybe? You motion to receive and to support the uh, EDAC recommendation. Okay, do we have any more discussion? If not, all in favor? That motion is carried. Okay, um, Lynn, again, for the Trent Severn Trail Town Buckhorn Committee initiatives and funding. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Speaking through you, Madam Mayor, you have before you the report of the Economic Development Officer on behalf of the Economic Development Advisory Committee regarding the Trent Severn Trail Town Buckhorn Committee initiatives and funding. At the May 10th, 2021 Economic Development Advisory Committee meeting, the chair provided the committee with an update on the Buckhorn Trail Town Committee. The RTO 8 Board of Directors have established a new project-based structure for their Trent Severn Waterway Trail Town program, and all former Trail Town committees were disbanded in favor of this new structure. The Economic Development Advisory Committee supports the initiatives begun by the Trent Severn Trail Town Buckhorn Committee and is recommending that Council receives the report from the Economic Development Officer on behalf of the Economic Development Advisory Committee regarding the Trent Severn Trail Town Buckhorn Committee initiatives and funding, and further that Council supports the Economic Development Advisory Committee recommendation and approves the Economic Development Advisory Committee assuming responsibility for the 2021 initiatives previously approved for the Trent Severn Trail Town Buckhorn Committee and further that funds allocated to trail town initiatives in the 2021 budget as per council resolution R2021-75 be reallocated to the Economic Development Advisory Committee. If you have any questions, I am happy to assist in answering those. I'm looking for hands. Seeing none, do we have a motion to accept this uh, initiative? Uh, Deputy Mayor Windover and Councillor Franson. Are the seconder or a comment? No, I think it's a great initiative for the, the village of Buckhorn. Okay, all in favor? That motion is carried. 
Okay, Ruth, Deputy Clerk, on behalf of the Economic Development Advisory Committee, again, Passport on Local Dining. Are you there, Anne? Thank you, through you, Mayor Clarkson. Uh, at the May 21st Special Economic Development Advisory Committee meeting, the committee passed a recommendation requesting council support and approval to create and distribute a passport to local dining to be funded within the approved 2021 EDAC budget. This report brings forward EDAC's request for council's consideration of the matter. Okay, have we questions? The work's been done on it so far is uh, all of the uh, participants that were in the passport previously have signed up with the exception of one that is no longer in business. And we've got, I think, five new ones, including the catch and uh, two or three other ones. There was some discussion as to whether or not we would end this program on uh, Labor Day or take it to Thanksgiving. And as I've spoken to the different restaurants to a point, they all want to stay to Thanksgiving because they feel that that fall uh, shoulder season would be maybe of more benefit to them than, than even what they're going to get out of the summer. But people are very, very uh, excited about it. Uh, easy, it was an easier um, sell this time than it, was, uh, than it was the first time. So I think people will be pleased with it. When uh, we start to get the copy back and everything, we have a committee that's going to actually take a look and, and, uh, and help make sure that it's, uh, that it's done the way it should be. Uh, rather than have stamps for people to stamp the passports, I figured it might be a better idea if we supply each restaurant with two gold pens so that all they have to do is put a little gold tick. And uh, if they get eight out of the, I think we've got 12 sites now, um, <clears throat> then they're eligible for the, they're eligible for the draw. Now there's been a little bit of a debate as to whether or not, um, oh, and I never can do this. Uh, the bakery in Buckhorn and Beechwood would be included in this. They were included in it the last time. And the reason that I put them in this time is because they participate in everything in the village. They've got signs on the rink. They belong to the tourist association. So anything that, that, that we do, and we don't draw a border when it comes to put the flowers out. So, and when, when the tourist association or when the, the BCC comes to, comes to looking for money, we don't say to them, well, half of your people live in Selwyn. So I think the community is small enough and tight enough that we can, that we can absorb these two. Uh, the really important thing to get the resorts in there is because they do pay a lot of taxes. But the other thing is a lot of people think that they're private clubs where in actual fact, they're public restaurants just the same as everybody else. So I checked with, uh, that's why I tried to get a hold of you this morning, Carol. So I've checked with uh, some of the rest of the, uh, the people on the economic development to find out what they thought about that. And uh, most of the people I talked to think that uh, including those two is, uh, is uh, not a bad idea. They say they're members of the Tourist Association. They support everything else. I don't know how we leave them out. So, uh, comment from anyone? Yes. I just think this is a great idea. It might get some people moving around a little bit in mm. a safe way and take out. And let's hope it can still happen with our present situation. Yes. A motion to support. Thank you. Uh, can I have a seconder? Deputy Mayor Wendover. All in favor? Carried. Okay, so hopefully within a week or so, we can get the, the raw look at here. Now, liaison reports for council boards and committees. Do we have anybody who wants to report on EDAC, PRCAC, or the, any more of these acronyms and I'm gonna go wacky. No. <laughs> Police Services Board. Uh, anybody wanna talk about any of these? Yes. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor, for you. Uh, I have a report from uh, Stephanie McPherson, our CAO for the library, um, that I'd like to read. The partnership with Trent Lakes Fire and Rescue that they uh, mounted was a resounding success. In three weeks, the library was able to distribute more than 50 activity kits to families in the area. Um, this new free take-home kit theme is Father's Day, where the kids can make a card to give to their loved ones. And the activity will run from June 1st until June 19th. Um, anyone who's interested can contact the Buckhorn Library. 
And just as a sort of a status, both branches are continuing to offer Wi-Fi and contactless curbside pickup. Faxing, photocopying, and essential computer use is also available by appointment. Uh, so that will continue until we get to step two in our roadmap to reopening. Uh, Carol, could you uh, ask staff to put that on our website? I could. Okay. Uh, anybody else with reporting on anything else that's going on here? Okay. Statutory public meeting pursuant to the Planning Act. We don't have one. Business arising from that meeting. We don't have one. Presentations. We don't have one. You know, Jesse, I think you've just taken it easy on us. <laughs> Delegations. We don't have one. Would anybody like to go out and come in? <laughs> I'm feeling lonely. Staff reports probably works. We don't have one. Recreation and facilities. We don't have one. However, I am going to make a comment. These young men and women are doing a fantastic job. I cannot believe the difference in the look around Buckhorn and the look around here. Anybody coming into this building has got to be just tickled pink with how well things are, are being taken care of. And I know there's a lot of volunteers working up in the northern part of the township as well. But my goodness, they are they are certainly doing a, doing a really good job. Um, extremely, extremely um, happy to see the uh, the difference. One thing I'd like to see them do if they have the time, and it looks like there's going to be some roadside work done. But if we can look at putting a rest site at the edge of Adam and Eve Road and Lakehurst Road, because hopefully it would encourage people to use that parking lot that we're in the process of acquiring for uh, the village so that people who park up there could actually sit there and have a little bit of a rest as they're going up and down the hill. So I'm sure we could get uh, Dan Slobodian or Jeff Cheshire to uh, donate a couple of stone benches so that we wouldn't have to worry about uh, vandalism or anything and maybe stick a couple of geraniums around it or something. But I think uh, we'll, we'll just see what kind of time these guys have got. But does anybody here think that that would be a good location to put a rest spot? Have you been down there, Carol, to see it? Yeah. The, the sidewalk, isn't it gorgeous? And you know, people think that that park up there is a, is a long way away for people to walk. But anybody who travels, that's not far. Most people in areas don't expect to, to be able to park right here and do whatever they're gonna do. That's not much of a walk. But I think if we could do something there to uh, kind of highlight that, it would be, would be kind of nice. Is there any, any agreement to that at all? Anybody see any value to that? Yes. I think it's a good idea. It's a good spot to stop and have a little break if you are walking the full distance from there to the locks or something. That would be always a good idea to have somewhere to sit. Well, we'll speak to them and see what kind of time they've got and, and uh, what it would take to set something in there. But I'm I'm anxious to see that uh, that parking area. Um, is that is that owned by the municipality? Yeah. That is municipality place, but the road used to be there. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It just it got left when the when the road got kind of so that they didn't do this. It's just that yeah. it's that remnant day. Eh? Yes, Donna. Sorry, through you. I thought you were uh, indicating the parking area. Sorry. So you're talking the Adam and Eve that area at the end of that yeah. road. Yeah, oh. just that little, just that little spot in there. Right. Yeah. Because it might make people more, more friendly toward that little, and then we've got to get some signage in there for uh, additional parking too. Because from what I read, that parking lot should be ready to go in about a week or so. Right. right. Yes. So through you, um, actually, yes, there has been. There's enough 400 spots there. So our public work staff have been doing some work or uh, starting to. And actually, Chelsea has ordered all the signage, and she indicated today it was already about one of them. So those will be going up shortly as well. That's, uh, that's going to be a dandy addition to the village. Okay, fire and emergency services. We don't have one. Building and planning. Allison. Allison, I hear really, really good things about you from people that I didn't even realize would know who you were. So, well done. Thank and you. I'll get you to speak to an application B44. 
Thank you. Through you, Madam Mayor, on today's agenda is a municipal appraisal form for consent file B4420 submitted by agent Crystal from Buckhorn Sand and Gravel on behalf of owner Brad Fisher. The subject land is located at 631 Elam Lodge Road. This is an application for a lot addition that will benefit a current landlocked parcel and will serve as a, sorry, will serve as a driveway, which is proposed to be 715 meters long. The landlocked parcel does contain provincially significant wetlands, and when considering the 120 meter buffer that must be maintained, there is ultimately no potential building envelope. Further, the severed land would be located within a vegetative protection zone for an unevaluated wetland and a provincially significant wetland. According to section 4.2.4.3 of the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe, development and site alteration is not permitted within a vegetative protection zone. Yeah. Staff have reviewed the application and recommend that council does not support this severance application. Thank you and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, do we do I see any hands? Anybody got a comment? Can we have a motion then please? Councillor Lamb said you oh, want I to had a comment there. I just is there any other use for that property other than to be developed? Now are you asking Allison sure, this? Sure, I could ask anyone in planning. I mean it, it just it's a it's a landlocked piece of parcel of land. I just didn't know if there's any other use that would be consistent with a vegetative protective zone. So through you, the landlocked parcel does have provincially significant wetlands on it and a buffer of 120 meters does need to be maintained. And when considering that buffer on the property, there's no potential building envelope for the property. So despite the zoning, that doesn't mean there's no permitted uses on the property, but the buffer does create no potential building envelope. Allison, are these buffers or these significant wetlands ever challenged? Because from what I'm hearing from some people, the designation of wetland is being very loosely applied. So have you have you heard of anybody who's challenging any one of these and, and won the challenge? I may have to defer that question to Adele. She might be able to answer it better. <laughs> Through you, Madam Mayor, there's a number of different kinds of wetlands. There's provincially significant wetlands that are a taboo that you don't develop in those areas. But a lot of our mapping shows uh, through the GIS that we have unevaluated wetlands. And what that requires is an individual person to undertake an environmental impact study to see if there is any area that could be developed and that the report or the study would identify a buffer or a setback from that unevaluated wetland. So if you have these wetlands on your property, um, if you're proposing any development, uh, we would recommend and we would want an environmental impact study to show where you could develop on that property. So this piece of property that we're speaking of here, is it uh, provincially significant or is it the latter. The landlocked parcel through you, Madam Mayor, does contain provincially significant wetlands and the portion of land that's to be proposed for the lot addition contains unevaluated wetlands. So it's just wet. <laughs> okay, so we have our mover and the seconder, or we don't have a mover. Would somebody like to uh, make a motion? What exactly is the motion, Terry? I think it's delay the application, oh, isn't it? To de defer, no, it's to, to delay it or to deny, uh, okay. deny, is it not? Yeah. So, motion to deny is what we're looking for. Don't everybody speak at once here. Yeah, you go. Deputy Mayor Windover, yeah. do we have a seconder to that motion? Councillor Armstrong, uh, any more comments? All in favor, that motion is carried. Okay, Allison, uh, Site Plan Development Agreement 282, County Road 36. 
Thank you through you, Madam Mayor. On today's agenda is a development agreement for Confederation Log and Timber Frame. Staff are recommending that Council receive this report from the Planning Administrator regarding a development agreement for the property located at 282 County Road 36, and further that Council authorize the execution of the development agreement, which is listed under the bylaw section of today's agenda. I would be happy to address any questions that Council may have. Okay, do we see any hands? And we have a motion, please. Councillor oh, Branson. Motion to support. Motion to support. Do we have a second of that? Councillor Lambshead, all in favor? Motion is carried. Adele Arbor, Temporary Manager of Building and Planning, Re Oak Orchard. Through you, Madam Mayor, uh, this is a report that deals with the uh, potential of applying an interim control bylaw for the plan of condominium for Oak Orchard development. As Council is aware, Curve Lake First Nation and the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industries has been in contact with the municipal staff in efforts to stop the issuance of building permits within Oak Orchard plan of condominium and these efforts are in order to protect and preserve the archaeological integrity of the area as documented through various archaeological studies that were previously undertaken in 2001 and 2002. These studies were prepared during the initial development of the Oak Orchard Plan of Condominium. There is also a site plan development agreement dated October 17, 2006 and it was entered into between the municipality and the developer being Oak Orchard Resort Incorporated at the time. And there are references in that site plan development agreement that speaks to some of the protection of archeological resources. And in this agreement, it talks about the shoreline setback zone was to be left in its natural state. Purchasers were to be advised that the shoreline setback on each lot includes a portion of a registered archaeological site and purchasers be advised that under section 48 of the Ontario Heritage Act it is an offense to in any way alter an archaeological site without a license. Prospective purchasers and owners should be aware of the site plan and development agreement which is registered on title. However, oftentimes staff find that the property owners are not familiar with agreements registered on title, and perhaps it's better that a policy and regulations appear in our official plan and zoning bylaw regulations where applicable. The special archeological constraint zone that's shown on our zone schedule identifies that um, any zone regulation, it doesn't provide any zone regulations or prohibitions in the zoning bylaw. If the zoning bylaw was written using today's standards, planning staff anticipate there would be zone provisions included, which means um, maybe there would be an inclusion for no, no disturbance of the land on and within the archaeological constrained area. The ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Cultural Industries has written 42 letters to all 42 property owners within the Oak Orchard Plan identifying known archaeological sites and outlining restrictions and prohibitions related to any activity within these areas. Section 38 of the Planning Act allows the Council of a Municipality to direct a reviewer study to be undertaken in respect of land use planning policies in the municipality or a defined area or areas thereof to be in effect for a specified time period which provides a period of not exceeding one year from the date of passing of the interim bylaw prohibiting the use of land buildings or structures within the municipality or the defined area. Council may extend the period of time during which the interim control bylaw is in effect However, um, a, the total time period should not exceed two years from the date of passing of the interim control bylaw. And that's all documented in the uh, Planning Act. No notice of hearing is required prior to the passing of the interim control bylaw. 
However, notice of the bylaw passage must be given in accordance with the Planning Act. Typically, an interim control bylaw is used as an extreme measure to stop an occurrence of a land use that may need further study to put in policies and or regulations to address an issue that a municipality may be facing. And in this instance, I am recommending to Council that this is an issue that is facing the municipality and I feel that there should be some better regulations and provisions in our zoning bylaw to address these concerns. Therefore, Mayor Clarkson, it is recommended that Council receive this report regarding the interim control bylaw for Oak Orchard Plan of Condominium for information and further that Council through a resolution today direct that a study be undertaken to consider policy and or zoning regulations to protect the archaeological resources located within the Oak Orchard Plan of Condominium and that Council authorize the enactment of an interim control bylaw which is listed under the bylaw section of today's agenda for Council's consideration. And through you, Mayor Clarkson, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, do I see hands? Go ahead. Thank you, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, and you can elaborate uh, perhaps further, Adele, but I just wanted to point out, because I don't think you mentioned it, that there have actually been skeletal remains that have been found uh, in these areas. So it's there is some validation that there are uh, architect, ar archaeological uh, remains of some concern there. In fact, it's possible there may be a burial site in this area that has not yet been identified, further supporting the need for a study. Through you, Mayor Clarkson, that is correct. And that's why uh, Curve Lake First Nation and the ministry has reached out to the municipality to issue stop work orders and um, in order to revoke any kind of building permits. Currently there have been four building permits that have been issued in 2021 and by law under the uh, Building Code Act there is nothing that's being violated by our chief building official in revoking any permits at this time. There is applicable law that um, directs which permits can be issued or not issued if it violates one of those regulations and there is nothing that has been violated. So those permits have been um, issued. So in the sake of protecting any future archeological resources in the area, um, we are recommending that an interim control bylaw be put in place. Okay, and I just, uh, I'd like to make a, a comment, I think on behalf of, of council and staff, uh, we're not going to waste any opportunity to, uh, to come to as expedient a solution to this as we possibly can. It isn't going to happen overnight, but it certainly is a priority and I think everybody uh, should be somewhat comforted in noting that it does have certainly uh, a good deal of priority. Nobody wants to see their their uh, their home uh, with any kind of a cloud over top of it. So with this, can we have a motion to accept this uh, this bylaw, uh, Councillor Franson? Yes, I would support an interim control bylaw and uh, the other uh, comments that Ed Hell made. Okay. Uh, do we have other comments? I'll get a seconder mm -hmm. first. Seconder? Mm -hmm. Deputy Mayor Windover? Mm -hmm. Comment? Any comments? Mm -hmm. All in favor? That motion has carried. Thank you, Adele. And thank you, Donna. I know behind the scenes you have done an awful lot of work on this. Thank you. Finance? None. Administration, none. Anne, you're going to speak about the awarding of the RFP for the Buckhorn Sports uh, Pad Feasibility Study. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Clarkson. 
Council passed a resolution at their February 2nd meeting directing staff to hire a consultant to review the feasibility of artificial ice at the Buckhorn Sports Pad and to develop a scope of work with input from both the Parks, Recreation and Culture Advisory Committee and the Buckhorn Community Centre with the study to be funded from the Buckhorn Community Centre Rink Reserve. The Director of Recreation and Facilities, with consideration of the input from the PRCAC and BCC, brought forward a proposed scope of work at the March 2nd Council meeting, which included consideration of all viable options for ICE services. Council approved the scope of work and directed staff to proceed with issuing an RFP for the Buckhorn Sports Pad Feasibility Study. RFP-01-2021 for the Buckhorn Sports Pad Feasibility Study was posted on April 12th and closed on April 28th. Three bids were received and were reviewed and evaluated by the Director of Recreation and Facilities, Deputy Clerk, and Temporary Records Management Coordinator. It is staff's recommendation that RFP-01-2021 be awarded to the highest scoring firm being FS Strategy, Inc. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Uh, questions? Yes. I have a question uh, uh, for you, Mayor. Uh, Anne, uh, how long do you think that, do you have any indication on how long the study will take? Uh, through you, the RFP did identify that the study was to be completed by, uh, I believe it was September. Just bear with me a moment. Yes, and for the I completion. Oh, thanks. Completion of the study in its entirety by September 10th, 2021. Any other questions? I have a comment, probably more than a question. If, as this feasibility study moves forward and something is a, a deal breaker, is it going to continue even if it can't proceed? Two things being one, uh, the BCC's ability or willingness to, to part with some land as far as septic is concerned. And the second one is parking, because if either one of those are uh, a no-go, it, it puts the entire project on, uh, on halt. So the $23,000 that's mentioned in there is uh, uh, mainly volunteer money. So I talked to Dylan about this. He said, there really is nothing we can do at this stage. It just has to run its course. But it seems to me to be a shame that if there are a couple of things that can say that if the situation, the, the rank can't go forward, that the money will continue to be, uh, to be spent. Or for that matter, the time. So I don't know if anybody wants to speak to that, comment to that, it just... Uh, <clears throat> So what you're commenting on there is the fact that uh, what is the sense of spending the $23,000 if in the, in the end we can't, the, the community center is not going to allow us to put a new septic system in if one's allowed? Well, but that's the parking been, won't be adequate? That's been, I think, that, I think that's been a concern for, for some time. Mm -hmm. And maybe mm -hmm. when we put this uh, RFP out, I assumed that that would be part of the, the process that it would be done in stages, but apparently it wasn't. And the fact that it's written up the way it is, uh, we're probably, we are probably stuck with this. Uh, Councillor Franson? Yeah, uh, my feeling is that we may not know about those problems till the study is completed. So the study is going to indicate how much land we need and uh, how much parking we need. So the, I believe the study will be completed and then it would, it'll be up to the municipality to negotiate with the Buckhorn Community Center. Well, it is what it is. Um, I think what we need is a motion to, uh, uh, to approve this. Councillor Franson. Councillor Lampsett? Yeah, I would like to make a motion that we approve that as recommended. Council receives a report from the Deputy Clerk awarding RFP 01 2021 for the Buckhorn Sports Pad Feasibility Study to FS Strategy Inc. 
and further that council approve funding the project in the amount of $23,303.09 from the Buckhorn Community Centre Rink Reserve. All in favor. Motion is carried. Okay, Jess, you're going to speak to an alternate voting method. Yes. Any of, any of the above. Thank you, through you. At the March 16th, 2021 regular council meeting, uh, council received a report about alternative voting methods for the 2022 election and directed staff to investigate the cost of combining electronic voting with paper ballots. Uh, staff reached out to the township of Havelock, Belmont, Methuen, uh, who did have paper ballots on election day at one location. Uh, the cost that they, um, that for the paper ballots, um, they purchased a thousand at 22 cents each. And in order to count them, they used a tabulator, which was $5,500 and $1,800 for an on-site operator for the day. If council were to consider paper ballots at more than one location, um, there would be the requirement of additional staff, an additional tabulator and operator for each location, um, and additional electronic resources at, um, in order to set up like a help center at the municipal office. And there may be other considerations involved um, with the different wards and the ballots available. Ultimately, uh, staff recommend uh, proceeding with electronic internet and telephone voting only for the 2022 election in order to prioritize elector safety. Um, internet telephone voting offers increased accessibility, transparency, and accountability, and is the most co cost effective and inclusive option for the municipality. Uh, with this, uh, there will also be the assurance that the help center uh, that was set up uh, the 2018 election will be set up for the duration of the 2022 election and i just wanted to um, also highlight that in 2018 there were 3992 electors that voted and only 124 used the services of the health center um, to vote electronically okay comments mm -hmm. Councillor Friends. Uh, I certainly support the uh, paper ballots only in one location. Uh, I don't support going into a, a, a just an electronic voting uh, system. Uh, I, I think that uh, a lot of people won't go to help centers because they don't want to feel foolish and they don't like asking for help. Good comments? Yes, I will agree with that. Too. Carol? Thank you, uh, through you, Madam Mayor. I'll be the one detractor here. <laughs> I think we had a successful experience doing internet telephone voting the last time around. Um, and the help center was available to those people who want it. Um, that's the way of the future. The other townships in uh, the county have gone, are going that way. I think we're taking a step backwards. People will get more and more used to it. And they've certainly gotten more comfortable with internet as we've had to do Zoom meetings and for families, et cetera, et cetera. So I see it as a step backwards to reintroduce paper ballots. Councillor Lamset. I, I kind of do agree with Councillor Armstrong because we, we've moved forward to that last election and it seemed to work very well. It's a lot less stringent on staff. It, it seemed to be there was availability of help. I think um, the clerk said there was 124 people asked for help. So I don't think there is a resistance to help if needed. I mean, I'm, I'm in support of electronic ballots as we seem to be moving into a more of an electronic age here with our present situation. And I, I think we could move forward with the same way. Yes. Well, I just want to comment. I, I know of a lot of people that would not have voted because of the fact that they don't know the paper ballot. And uh, if they didn't want to come and ask for assistance, that's why they didn't come. They, they didn't want to come here anyway. They wouldn't come here because of that. So it's hard to tell how many people didn't vote because of the fact there was no paper ballot, you know. So I certainly am not in favor of just electronic. I'm in favor I'm, of having at least one. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not either. I think we need the paper ballots, and I certainly don't think we need an electronic counter. I worked the last uh, federal election, and we counted those ballots by hand. Uh, 
I don't see that we need to with the with the numbers that we have that we can't uh, that we can't count by hand. I think the election going to a poll and whatever is part of the. I think especially rurally, it's part of the experience. And if our democracy can't stand uh, a little bit of extra work and whatever at uh, at election time, um, I don't know. I just I think I I, th I, I say as, as far as Carol and and uh, Terry are concerned, I agree that electronically that's the way a lot of people are going, but. I think there's a good group of people yet that aren't there. I, I'm one of them. Yes. Uh, we see it with our COVID uh, 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 system of getting uh, your shots. A lot of elderly people had a real hard time uh, going on the internet and booking their appointments. They had to ask grandchildren, they had oh, to sure. ask children. They had to ask community leaders to help them navigate the system. So I think uh, voting is just as important as getting an immunization shot. I agree with you, because yeah, there's there seems to be an awful lot of disrespect for electronic all over the all over North America, as far as I'm concerned. You hear it a lot of times that the cheating here and the cheating there and all over the place. So I don't know. I. Uh, well, I'm not, I'm, I'll, I'll, make, I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll make a motion that we ha uh, have electronic voting, but we have paper ballot in one location, and that location would be the municipal office. Now, because electronic, does that mean the mail in too? Because the mail in ballots, that worked pretty well. Are we still doing yeah. those? No, no. We would not be doing that. <clears throat> there so was a lot of problems with that. Uh, people put, not putting it in the secure envelope and that there were there were a lot of ballots that weren't counted because they weren't uh, well then we're certainly going to in my view not just going to electronic then no i i no. said electronic plus one polling uh, station i'll second okay all in favor excuse me i'd like yes. a recorded vote please sure we're not going to count your mind jack <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready for the we're ready for the vote? Yeah. Yeah. So it'll start with Councillor Armstrong who requested oh. this recorded vote. Are you in favor? No. Mayor Clarkson? Yes. Councillor Franzen? Yes. Councillor Lambshead? No. Deputy Mayor Windover? Yes. And that vote has carried. Okay. Sale of municipal land. Uh, to Cordic. Jesse, would you like to speak to that, please? Thank you. Through you, at the March 16th uh, council meeting, council directed staff to proceed with the request from Brian and Janice Cordic to purchase municipal land adjacent to their property at 12 Fire Route 382 after the registration of an easement in favor of 8 and 10 Fire Route 382 to maintain their vehicular access. Staff have been in contact with the solicitor, Mr. Jim Baird, uh, who advised that while the registration of the easement would need to proceed the transfer of the land, these processes can be initiated concurrently and will be finalized in the appropriate order. Uh, notice was um, circulated per the disposal of real property policy and no comments from neighboring property owners in opposition of the sale have been received. Um, the next step would be for Mr. and Mrs. Cordick to obtain at least one appraisal of the fair market value of the land, which will come back to council to approve the appraisal amount. And the recommendation is to receive the report, uh, declare the land surplus, and authorize the sale of the land to the adjacent landowners, and authorize the mayor and clerk to execute any documents necessary to affect the sale of this property. Okay. Can we have a motion, please? Make a motion to support the recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Lambshead. Seconder. A second with the question. Yes. Um, why are they only required to get one appraisal? What, would, don't we usually ask for multiple appraisals so that we can choose the mm -hmm. middle one? Not usually. Councillor. Uh, I'd say probably why is it, it would have to be a licensed appraisal. Yeah. Jesse, are you okay? Through, through you, yes, the, the disposal of a real property policy 
um, does outline that it needs to be an appraisal um, done by an Ontario land appraiser, and the requirement is only to get one appraisal yeah. done. Okay, mm -hmm. well, I'll something. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> okay. It's always in the news. So that motion then, you're going to second I'll that second. motion? Yes. All in favor? And that motion is carried. We've got a bunch of correspondence for information. Anybody can pull any one of these out if they like. If not, we'll have a motion to uh, uh, to receive. Council motion to receive. Thank you, Councillor Franson. Seconder, Councillor Armstrong. All in favor? And that motion is carried. Correspondence for action, County of Peterborough to bridge to rename a bridge. Yes. A motion to support. Okay, and do we have a since, second? Since it's a bridge, I go over every day and didn't even know that they had a name. <laughs> <laughs> you realize we're going to have to buy a sign, don't you? <laughs> okay, Carol, I'll second. Okay, all in favor? That motion is carried. That's just so, that's just so Councillor Friends and will know where he's going. Exactly. Town of Cochrane, reopening mm -hmm. of Greenwater Provincial Park. Councillor Armstrong, motion to receive. Okay, uh, seconder, uh, Councillor Lambshead, all in favor, that motion is carried. Township of McKellar, tax relief on CERB payments. Motion to receive. Thank you, seconder, Councillor Armstrong, all in favor, thank you. Bylaws on the amended, on the agenda memorandum. Jesse, you're going to speak to this. Yes, thank you through you. There are three bylaws on today's agenda that didn't have an associated public meeting or council report. The first is B202160, which is a zoning bylaw amendment for file 2101, which a public meeting was held May 4th and was supported by council, but was deferred pending the delivery of the reference plan, which has now been received. B202165 is the waste bylaw. Council received reports at the May 18th meeting regarding household medical waste exemptions and amending the Sunday hours. Council approved permitting a household medical waste exemption. However, the approval of the bylaw was deferred and it also included changes to the Sunday hours, which has been deferred until September. So this includes the household medical waste exemptions and, the mi and minor housekeeping amendments, but does not include any changes to the Sunday hours. And B-2021-68 is a bylaw to authorize the execution of a development site plan agreement for consent file B-1920, which is a condition of their severance approval. Okay. And we don't need a motion for those, or we need a motion for all three? We don't need a motion for the memo, but we'll need a motion for each bylaw. Individually? Correct. Okay. So can we have a motion for... Uh, the 2101, Councillor Lampsett. Motion to approve. And seconder would be Councillor Armstrong. All in favor? Motion is carried. Uh, the waste bylaw, 065. Motion, please. Councillor Franson. Mm -hmm. Councillor Lampshead. All in favor? Carried. Uh, 068, Bonner Tribidu. Councillor Lampshead. Motion to approve. Seconder. Seconder, seconder, seconder. Deputy Mayor Windover, all in favor. And development site agreement, also for Boner Tribidu. Uh, 068, again. That's, sorry, that's the one we just did. We're on to 2021-69 site plan agreement. Oh, okay. All right, so motion two. Councillor Lamsett, all agreement. Seconder on. would be Councillor Franzen, all in favor. Now we've got the interim control bylaw for Oak Orchard condominium, right? That's our next one. And a motion, please. Councillor Franzen. Motion to support. Okay. And the seconder would be Councillor Lamsett, all in favor. And service agreement for the Buckhorn Sports Pad feasibility study. Motion. Councillor Armstrong and seconder. Councillor Franzen, all in favor? Carried. Business arising out of a previous meeting. AMO delegation requests. Councillor Franzen? Yeah. 
Uh, two, I was thinking about Minister of Natural Resources to deal with uh, the motion that we passed about uh, controlling of uh, heat shooting and target shooting on Crown land. And uh, I, I'd like to, with the appropriate ministry, uh, dealing with uh, short-term rentals. And I would assume you'd like staff to help you with these? And um, uh, yes, I certainly need lots of help. Okay. Uh, Councillor Lampshead? I'm just wondering if when we're talking to the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry, we could mention gypsy moths on our prolific situation that we're getting into here now? Yeah. Now I can take I can take that one to um, like I'm doing AMO through the county. I'm doing one on the um, last of several liability. And I thought it would do the gypsy moth as well because it's covering to hopefully get the county involved in it. Anyway, that notice of motion is coming up and we can I mean, for that matter, you can take it, we can take it both places. But I think if Peter gets two, that's probably what all he's going to get. And I think you're the only one from Amo in the township, aren't you? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, one other thing I wouldn't mind talking to the Minister of Natural Resources about is that you need cave. Uh, why it isn't designated as Nancy? Yes, I think I think they have a little bit of a hesitation because of uh, uh, the proposed gravel pit. Well, I think we've got to be careful on that one. <laughs> we've already got we've got some issues. <laughs> anyway, I think you. I think this time, if you get the two, you're probably doing. Yep. You're probably doing well. Yep. So uh, everybody in favor of Peter doing those two delegations? Just a question if I may, through yeah. you, Madam Mayor. Um, what is the request that we're making of the ministry relative to short-term rentals? Um, why there isn't provincial guideline on short-term rentals? There should be a policy statement from the provincial government on short-term rentals. It'd be nice if we had uh, uh, from one municipality to, to another. Because I, I think that they, a lot of them must, uh, have to be considered a business and be paying business tax and being uh, being rezoned as the business operation. Which is federal, but, but yes. Um, thank you. Yep. Okay, so you've got your motion. Uh, were you going to second that? Sorry, if I can just clarify, there was... Um, a variety of topics mentioned for the MNRF, and I just want to clarify which ones we are actually requesting for. There was the skeet and target shooting, gypsy moths, and the Dudney caves. Are all three being requested? Well, you don't have the short-term rental in there. Uh, yeah, I, that's for MNRF. Yeah, those were specific to MNRF. I'm not sure um, off the top of my head which um, ministry we re request for the short-term rentals, but I do have that included. I just wanted to know if all three topics were being included for the MNRF delegation. I think you'd have to find out if they're all covered under one ministry. I'm sure there will be. I don't know. I have no issues with bringing it to their attention. It certainly is something we should be discussing. So I yeah. think all three topics are relevant. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. That's See, Ron, what you and I did the last time, and I can't think, I think it was the uh, the last two, uh, oh, this insurance one. But when we went, uh, we tagged up with uh, with Dave Smith, and he actually took the paperwork from us and made the presentation. Mm -hmm. So if he's willing to do that again, it holds more, it holds more weight because they're talking person to person. So that's a request that can be made of Dave. All right, so have we got our, have you got all the motions you need there or where are we? Yep, I have that. Councillor Franzen moved that, but I don't have a seconder yet. Okay, can we have a seconder for that? Uh, Councillor Lambshead, all in favor? Motions are carried.
Okay, uh, business arising out of a previous meeting. Have we got anything there that anybody wants to speak about? And I'm leaving the chair now because I've got a notice of motion coming. So I'll just repeat it and then you know, my deputy can call for the vote. Um, whereas the gypsy moth is an invasive species and whereas it is recognized that an infestation causes trees to defoliate one year, and whereas if the same area is hit for the second year in a row, a very high majority of those stripped trees will not survive. And whereas forests which die at an alarming rate are hosts for forest fires. Now, therefore, the Council of the Municipality of Trent Lake strongly suggests the province we introduce a spraying program and that further that a copy of this resolution be sent to the MPP, Peterborough County Council, and the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry. And Deputy Mayor Windover, can you call for discussion sure. and the vote, please? Any like comments? I would like to second that motion. Yeah. All in favor? I have a comment, if I may. I'm oh, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, I absolutely support this. Mm -hmm. I think, just so we don't raise false expectations, I think it's very unlikely the ministry will take this up because they're probably not going to take the responsibility for spraying private properties because of the liability and the concerns around that. Um, and this, I think, we might even ask Chelsea for some input on this, but even those municipalities that have taken this up as a responsibility are only spraying their own owned properties. Again, because of the liability of spraying private properties. So I support asking the MNRF, absolutely. Um, but I just want to temper everybody's expectations that I think it's very unlikely they will take this up. Well, the last time we had the infestation, they did it. And they flew over our house and they sprayed everything in sight. It cost us absolutely nothing. We weren't even asked if they were going to do it. They determined that the infestation was there. It was the second year and they wiped them out. Because unlike the tent caterpillar, this thing does not cycle. If we don't knock it out, it just continues doing its thing. I agree. And one of the arguments that, that didn't get put in here that should, uh, the province and whoever has deemed it an invasive species. So they spray poison ivy, they spray, what is this oak thing or giant hogwart or whatever. Uh, something as important as this should be their, their responsibility. They want municipal, they want individuals to pay $350 an acre to get a spray. And these little beggars come down and the wind comes up and they take them to the next neighbor. So um, from the information that, that I've been able to get, they make a determination in January where they're going to spray. So we have to make sure and get this, uh, they have to come out now and take a look what's, because we're just seeing the tip of it now, like the area that, that you're talking about. Within two weeks, when these little fellows are this long, they're going to be half the size of your thumb and there'll be nothing left. So we've got to get we've got to get the the, um, uh, the the pictures of this because you've got to make application for the spraying in January and there's nobody in January is going to say well look what happened to our trees. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know I've been looking into it all night low in tree service, eh? and just from my front yard it's uh, six thousand dollars. Not to spray, but to, to drill them and put that stuff in. Oh, so that's what they're actually. Up. It's about four hundred dollars a tree. That's and they do that for Dutch elm disease too. Pardon? They do that for Dutch elm disease. Anyway, and, all we yeah. can do is try. Mm -hmm. And yep. if it gets, if it's widespread enough and it starts to hit well-to-do properties, and anyway, I, the motion passed, I guess. Got a call for the vote. Yeah, call for the vote. Call for the vote. Yeah. All yeah. in favor? Carried. Are there any other notices of motion today? Information items, liaison reports for external boards and committees. Carol, you gave a good one on that fire one. That's that's a good one. Anybody else got anything they want to discuss? Uh, seeing none. <laughs> Now we're going into a closed meeting again.
So council is going into a closed meeting to discuss labor relations or employee negotiations. Anyone that is listening or viewing the electric electronic meeting may remain on the line for when council rises from closed session. We need a motion to go into closed. Councillor Lamsand, Councillor Armstrong, all in favor? Motion is carried. And
Donna and I can go somewhere and get warm. Are we ready? Okay, we're going to rise from closed at 225. And we need a motion, please. Councillor Armstrong and Deputy Mayor Wendover. All in favor. That motion is carried. Business arising from the closed meeting, adoption of the minutes from the last May 18th. Councillor Franson and Councillor Lambshead, all in favor. Motion has carried. Adoption of confirming, yes. Sorry, just through you, the business, other business arising, the recommendation is that council endorse the agreement between the Canadian Union of Public Employees and Local 1306.1 and the Corporation of the Municipality of Front Lakes. Okay. Councillor Lambshead. I'll make that motion. And Deputy Mayor Windover, all in favor. Motion is carried. Now, can we do the confirming bylaw? Yes, we can. Okay. Adoption of the confirming bylaw. Deputy, uh, Councillor Franzen, Councillor Armstrong, all in favor. Now, a motion to adjourn, and you may all do this if you okay, like, yeah. including Donna and Jesse. <laughs> Motion is Deputy Mayor Windover, Mayor Francis, Carrie Lamson, Carol Armstrong, myself, seconded by the whole works of us, and Carrie. Yes. Thank you, folks.